Hey guys, so just a quick update on my uh, PV to solar, um, solar PV to uh, water heater directly. Um, no charge controller, no batteries, no inverter, um, just directly DC. Um, so just a quick update. So this has been running for about a month and a half now. And uh, you can see here on the meter, and fortunately this meter um, doesn't have memory and the maximum it can read uh, up to a hundred thousand watts which is a hundred kilowatts and then it will reset itself uh, so it does it, it, it won't go any higher than that so it resets um, last month so it reset uh, 15 days ago um, as you can see right here get this my phone to focus so the meter is, has been reading for 14 days and I am currently at 70,000 watts uh, which is you know 70 kilowatts um, right now it's doing 951 watts uh, 106 volt uh, at ni almost 9 amps and it's about uh, 1030 in the morning right now and it will hold 951 watts until like 3 p.m. and then it will start you know dropping down um, but as for last month, so because of that meter won't remember or it won't go any higher, I had to create a little sheet so that I can log down, you know, when, whenever it resets, I can log down how much uh, total power it has produced. And this is the grid, how much um, the grid it's using from the grid in it, because I have the 110 plug in into the watts meter right here to keep track of that. So here's basically the number last last month in January, which is the coldest uh, month uh, for Arizona here. Um, and then we had a lot of cloudy days, man. We had like completely overcast cloudy day, 10, day, 10 or more days la last month, which is very unusual for Arizona. Anyway, it used a total amount of 64 kilowatts from the grids and then a hundred kilowatts uh, was produced from the uh, from the solar PV from the four panels, and I had the 110 uh, 120 volt uh, thermostat, which is the grid set up to at about 125 Fahrenheit. Um, that's when it start uh, cutting off. <clears throat> so for this month, so for this month it has been 14 days. Right, 14 days and the PV is already making 70 uh, kilowatts. So that's so it's going to be a lot more than last month because last month, last uh, the whole month, it make 100 kilowatts. But right now, only 14 days and it's already doing uh, 70 kilowatts. And for the grid this month so far, so here it has been. For, so 14 days, roughly 354 hours, um, and then here is how much it has been using for the last 14 days, 6 kilowatts. And this actually just been uh, pulling power for the last two days, uh, but it has remained for zero for like 11, 12 days. And for the past two days, we, has been, we have been a lot of cloudy. Uh, condition so that's why it's been using six kilowatt in 14 days and right now it's not using anything so so it's pretty good and there's days where at the end of the day which is about four o'clock the water is super hot I mean it, it's burning hot um, I'm thinking it's probably around 130 135 at the end of the day and then after you shower at night, two or three shower in the morning, it comes. I come back and check that it's probably about 90 to 100, probably more like 105. Um, and then everything started over again, but uh, so far so good. But I might have another problem here. It's because last time I mentioned that I removed the bottom thermostat, the, uh, the DC side, it's just because I couldn't find any thermostat to work, so right now it's running direct and it, it's, it, there, there's no way for it to uh, uh, shut off when it gets to temperature, so uh, 
That might be a problem in the summer because um, it's going to be hot in the summer. I won't be using as much uh, water and we're going to get a lot more sun in the summer. So I may disconnect two panels in the summers and that may be just enough for the summers. And I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with the other two panel. Um, certainly I don't want to introduce a battery system um, into this setup. So... Uh, We'll see, I'll figure something out. Um, I bought some relay, um, some DC relay on eBay, some of the cheap clone one, and that was a big mistake. Uh, apparently that those doesn't work. Um, I'll show you those relay here, hold on. Okay, so these are the uh, uh, Foltec uh, solid state DC relay. It's weighted for uh, five to 200 volt DC, um, but it's a piece of crap. Uh, there is a lot of people saying online that there are clones and um, the clones one are crap, uh, which is probably this one. That's what it is because it's pretty cheap. I got it for like 12 bucks, so you can't expect much. Anyway, I hooked it up. It worked once. <laughs> so you hooked it up and you power these two terminal uh, low voltage and then it uh, connect the power. Um, but that's all it did. It connected at the power and then when I disconnect the, uh, the input uh, power uh, it will still remain on. Uh, I assume that it fuses the two uh, connection and regardless if you power the inputs or not um, there will still be connection between these two so this thing is dead. It's useless now. Um, you know, so I don't know what to do now. I might may try another relay, on, um, a, a better one, I suppose. That might work. But my intention was to run the, the wire here through this relay and then run a 12-volt uh, power source through the stock uh, thermostat because the, the stock thermostat will be able to, to run a 12-volt uh, DC just fine. I mean, it just it, it wouldn't work on high voltage, but if it's a 12 volt power source going through the thermostat, then that power source will be hooked up to the inputs right here to power this relay. And if there's no power source going to this relay, it will disconnect the the power going to the element. That's my that's the theory, but uh, I have to find a better uh, high voltage uh, uh, solid state uh, DC relay. But other than that, uh, the water has been heating very hot and I think uh, it's working well and it's saving quite a bit of money. So uh, we'll see. Alright, thanks for watching guys.